you might be aware of things like uh, fishing kits which are available to buy off the shelf it has become a commodity to just create an adversarial attack what they could do is leverage modern technologies such as ai such as automation to get better to get to eliminate all those repetitive tasks that they have to do which has no human intelligence so you will get a request the soc team will get a request from the team member or from the employee of the organization hey i want to unblock the access to the website now that's a standard procedure you would do you would go check out you'll do a bunch of uh, thread and look up and say yeah this is okay to unblock this should be comfortably automated the impact of ai is much larger than we are able to imagine right now particularly when it comes to security operations procedures to significantly enhance threat detection identification response investigation methodologies it is all pervasive hello and welcome to cio news i am kushpa soni founder of CIO News. This is our exclusive interview series on the topic of future of cybersecurity operations with automation and generative AI. I am very excited to invite my guest. We have Abhishek Narula, the Chief Technology Officer at Fortinet. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much, Abhishek. Abhishek, I'm going to take a few seconds to quickly introduce you to my viewers. Well, you've been in the industry from a very long time. You don't need any introduction, but I'm going to take a few seconds to do that. So Abhishek uh, is an accomplished technology leader and as mentioned, a current chief technology officer at Fortinet. He has been leading the technology segment for Fortinet's 40 SAR business. And Abhishek has a distinguished career span Planning of over 23 years. Abhishek has built six software products from ground up, showcasing his expertise in business continuity, automation platforms, cybersecurity, and data center management. Throughout his career, Abhishek has held prominent positions in companies like Symantec, Veritas, IBM, and several startups. He's been consistently, uh, you know, demonstrated his ability to understand customer pain points and deliver customized solutions to meet their needs. Abhishek, like I mentioned, I'm very excited to have this conversation with you and learning from you on the current trends around cybersecurity and the future of cybersecurity operations with uh, automation and generative AI. Thank you once again for joining us. My pleasure. Awesome. So uh, to begin with, Abhishek, I wanted to put across my first question. The dynamics of security operations have undergone significant changes in the recent years. And with the advancement of technology and the increasing sophistication of cyber threats, security operations team are facing you know, a lot of complex challenges in protecting organizations from various cyber attacks. So what are your thoughts? I mean, uh, drawing from these experience that you have in witnessing this industry's evolution, maybe if you can shed some light on, on the latest trends that you're observing in the security operations. Well, there's lots happening out there. Yeah. You'd be aware of uh, our fellow team members at security operations facing lots of challenges particularly from hackers becoming more nimble, more faster, more automated. You might be aware of things like uh, phishing kits, which are available to buy off the shelf. To give you one example, one of them is called Greatness. They offer a single platform, simple to use, uh, which can produce convincing login pages and allows you to... It has become a commodity to just create an adversarial attack. That's what's happening in the adversarial space. I wonder why we, the good people, uh, protect the in a similar manner, right? Mm -hmm. And to give you one more example on overall security operations landscape, it's continuously evolving. The threats are becoming more sophisticated. Threat actors are utilizing ingenious tactics to breach defenses, evade all sort of detections, presenting a significant challenge to security teams. Are you aware of things like ECANS, DearCry, DarkSide? They have put considerable pressure on security teams. These attacks typically tend to exploit vulnerabilities, zero days, and methods all the way ranging from stolen credentials to phishing and whatnot. Yeah. Moving on, complexity of all the environments is all at the all-time high, and it is continuously increasing. 
COVID, uh, you, know, you know, the recent thing which happened, the IT explosion, IoT explosion, convergence of all these devices. There are just so many more devices, more, more ways to enter the environment. It is becoming a difficult to catch up as well on the, these kind of trends, uh, these kind of new attack surfaces, if you will. Our, and at the end yet, uh, our security pool, uh, the talent pool remains at the same level. We always struggling to hire good set of people, right? If nothing else, regulators are also after us uh, all the time. Compliance is something which, which you know we can never uh, evade. And uh, worst thing about cybersecurity and uh, you know particularly our detection tools is they produce so many alerts, and so many of them are false positives. It just becomes so difficult for any cybersecurity expert to cope up with that. And then majority of the time just goes there in uh, you know, for dealing with false positives, as opposed to dealing with a lot of uh, important threats. My key message really here is uh, adversaries are getting smarter, they're getting faster. Why can't we, the good guys, also be nimble? So true. And um, I think it is it is the need of the hour, uh, very rightly said. How do you recommend, like, what are, what's your recommendation, you know, specifically, um, for the cybersecurity teams, what they should be doing. What are your recommendations around that? It's not technology. It's it's a way of just giving them time. If somehow you can create uh, 48 hours a day, I think our, our all the fellow cybersecurity team members would be very happy. But that we all know that's not possible, right? So they have still 24 hours and humanly will be working from eight to 12 hours only. What they could do is leverage modern technology such as AI, such as automation, to get better, to get to eliminate all those repetitive tasks that they have to do, which has no human intelligence, use leverage automation for that. That's that's correct, and in fact, it's a topic. It's it's a very touchy subject as well because um, AI is something that has been discussed in in a lot of forums, in discussions. More often than the uh, not, security teams today we still believe fear automation and fear automation could lead to more problems is, is what they perceive so human validation is a crucial element for them and no one would want to automate blocking of threads what's your thought around that interesting thing is uh, you know what you said also contains a, a solution to the problem so problem is uh, the fear that automation can do something which we do not intend to be. and uh, the solution is we do not automate human decision-making capabilities. We automate the processes. It does not hurt to automate a blocking process when it is guarded by a human violation. Let me explain this with example. Let's say there's an alert which says, uh, here's a potentially unsafe website which has been accessed. In such a case, analysts is required to do, at a very large level, three steps. Number one, they have to establish a context. The URL that is being in the question, is it a known good URL, known bad URL? That's the context. You ask, you look at uh, reputation logs from various uh, threat intel. Second thing you need is access. Like, has anybody from my organization accessed this web URL apart from the alert only, right? right. So that's the context, number one thing. Number two thing is then decision making. Saying, now that I have all the data, I know who accessed it. I know the known reputation. I know everything about this URL. Mm -hmm. Should I block it or not? So that's a decision making second step. Right. Third step is putting the actual block in your security devices. Let's say in a firewall, you'll go to apply a change and say, hey, this, this URL effectively will be in a blocked list. Now, come to think of it, out of these three steps, only second step of human decision making is the one which is relevant for human intelligence. Other two are just standard processes you collect the data can be done automatically you put a block can be done by automation which can do a block the only thing which is important is a second step so all of a sudden if you create a playbook like that and typically a sore product such as 40 sore that's where you started realizing a 65 percent time saving that's where we should be heading that's where we should be how helping our uh, fellow analysts to combat the barrage of alerts they get every day Interesting example, uh, Abhishek, and uh, I mean, I can completely relate to it with all the discussions that I've been having with the security leaders in various uh, roundtable discussions that we have. And uh, these are some of the challenges that do come up. So 
Thanks for sharing the example with us. What are you saying is that automation can be used for doing repetitive tasks while it's still safe because in a substantial action is guarded by human intelligence and approval. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. That is the idea. Let me let me explain that with a couple of yeah. more examples of where yeah. automation can be utilized to a larger extent mm -hmm. and yet be super effective, fail safe. Right? Phishing investigation is something which happens all the time in almost all organizations. This is where the teams are trained, employees are trained, they report that this is potentially suspicious email. Hey, SOC team, can you please investigate? Now, there's a set procedure for that. You go through SPF checks, you go through all the headers of the email and look at various aspects of the email, any URL which is there, do a sandboxing and whatnot, right? These, these kind of uh, processes are well established. You should be able to comfortably automate the entire process. Yeah. The only part which you would want to stop or prevent or be guarded is when there's a blocking which is going to happen. At that time, just take a quick confirmation from the analyst saying, hey, I establish everything like this as an organization process. Can I go ahead and block? You say yes or no. Simple. Right. right. Similarly, I mean, you would be aware uh, in any, any good organization whether good security process is applied, they will have the policies in place to block certain type of website. Now, it, it so happens that uh, some of them are wrongly categorized. There could be a new website which you want to access. It's not yet known by your security devices. So you will get a request. The SOC team will get a request from the team member or from the employee of the organization. Hey, I want to unblock the access to this website. Now, that's a standard procedure. You would do, you will go check out, you will do a bunch of uh, threat intel lookup and say, yeah, this is okay to unblock. This should be comfortably automated. In right. those cases, you are able to get your uh, automation to almost 100%. There are cases like that as well. Great. I think this is helpful. Thanks for sharing more examples. And as we understand, automation is security automation and the role it plays in security op automation is shifting gears. We hear a lot about AI, LLM, like chat GPT. So can those help in any way in security operations? Well, Chat GPT has helped me in uh, generating jokes, generating, <laughs> generating share or shari if you want. Uh, if Chat GPT or large language models, as they are known in a technical world, they can generate these kind of elements. Why not? They can assist in a meaningful way to the to the security team as well. Yeah. Let me give you a couple of examples of that. Maybe it's a new thing that you're observing, or maybe it's the same thing that you're observing again and again. Now, you need some insights. You need some uh, person to talk to understand threat. You can actually post those questions to chat GPT saying, hey, here is a kind of a threat I'm observing. Here is the alert description. What should be my response plan? Right. Chat GPT will give you instructions saying, hey, do a SPF check. Hey, do a who access, access log check and whatnot, right? right? So those instructions, if it's available to you using chat GPT or Google Bard, you know, such large language model, it's actually very helpful to use them. The impact of AI is much larger than we are able to imagine right now, particularly when it comes to security operations, procedures to significantly enhance threat detection, identification, response, investigation methodologies. It is all pervasive. I'll tell you some of those uh, techniques or uh, things why our customer base is using these uh, AI technologies. And again, through automation platforms, we are able to mitigate false positives. Mm -hmm. AI utilizes all the historical data to differentiate between false positive and uh, true positive, reduces the clutter. So goes back to the alert overload example, that you're able to reduce the alert overload. You're able to do a lot of investigation in an automated manner. And because AI is also implemented in such a way, it's continuously learning in your environment. So that tribal knowledge, that uh, organization procedures or approach to the cybersecurity that is continuously being learned by these technologies and helping you getting better by every day. Great. I think a uh, great conversation, Abhishek. Thank you so much for sharing such uh, wonderful insights for our viewers. Uh, before I conclude our uh, discussion, I have one more question. We'd like to hear a brief response. Maybe, you know, if you can share your top advice for organizations looking for successfully integrating their AI into their security operations and strengthening their cybersecurity posture. So your top advice on that. Well, I would say... 
AI automation, apart from being buzzwords, they also are transformative steps. It has to be taken in a careful manner and uh, always remember, no matter what you do, whether it's chat GPT using LLMs and AI, and uh, it's automation using any sort of technology, human oversight and expertise remains paramount. Mm -hmm. While AI could help you in enhancing the efficiency, human competence remains crucial. Mm -hmm. You should be investing in your security teams to learn more clearly, think and set objectives, collaborate and select the right partners for your seamless collaboration with these AI enhanced tools. This critical approach will lead to greater outcomes and optimal outcomes. Always remember AI and automation is augmentation, not a standalone solution. It's not replacing human, it is there to help us. By weaving AI into your security strategy and fostering a culture of collaboration and continuous improvement, you can proactively counter all these growing cyber threats and cultivate a good cybersecurity posture for yourself. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Abhishek, once again for taking our time, joining us on the CIO News episode and giving all your wonderful insights for our audience. Thank you once again for joining. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me here.